how's your day going? I mean, I've been following you for like three years or so like that. I think I, I think I discovered you when uh, you were touring with Intervals, which is like a whole nother can of worms I want to ask you about. Like how has like the touring, how has touring um, helped you in your music career? Like I always kind of feel like, you know, what's the point of touring if I could just stay home and post something on the internet and get, you know, some thousand views on the internet when I go play a show and there's 18 people there, you know, I, I've, I haven't quite figured out like the pros and cons there. Mm-hmm. You no. Know, so, I mean, yeah, that's the, I, we could just jump right into it. Like, how, like, I'm really curious to ask you, um, the playing shows versus like the internet thing, like what, and I, I'm, I'm literally just asking for advice because I'm still figuring this stuff out myself. Yeah, I guess like it's a, a balance to me. Um, the show stuff is, um, I think, why I play, I guess, is to play out. Yeah. Um, and the internet thing is just kind of like, a, I guess, a way to help you get there. Um, and I had uh, some trouble like balancing that stuff. Cause I got kind of sucked into the internet thing for a little bit. And, you know, you get kind of too yeah. in- invested in it. Um, and I had to back off for like a couple of years. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know you had like a, an internet, internet phase. What, what was that like? What was that like just a handful of years ago or something? Yeah. It was just, you know, getting too. Um, and I feel like too invested in posting and, and, um, stuff like that, um, making sure I had stuff out and it felt, I guess it was kind of like similar to like what Mateus Asado went through, like when he Hmm. deleted his whole Instagram, it was kind of like the same time I was kind of like, eh, don't, Oh, did he he feel did he do that? Yeah. Does his, mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. I think he's, he's back now, but he deleted his social media stuff for, I don't know, like a year maybe. Wow. Yeah. I think his, his was the same type of thing, like feeling too invested in that yeah. world. Um, instead of, uh, playing like, and like exploring stuff for himself. I think that was what, his thing was, but it's kind of how I felt. So now it's like a balance, like trying to, to, um, balance that out. And I do like just the normal, like bar gigs and yeah, which are a blast, but (laughs) which are a blast. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they can be, but, um, yeah. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the scene like that, like down there in Tampa, like the music, (laughs) There's no scene. There's no scene. Cause I, no. I see you, I see you like playing shows sometimes and people are, are showing up. It looks like. It- yeah. So I, I live in like downtown Tampa, um, mm-hmm. which is more business district. Like, um, have you ever been in Nashville? No, I've never been in Nashville. I mean, when I've you say like the business, when you say the business district, I can kind of picture in my head, like where you are. That's like, you know, probably yeah. like some of the high, the high rises and such where people go to work. And, yeah. It's yeah. it's stuff like that. There's not really a, a scene like here in the actual Tampa area. Um, but like, so like I go and on like the outskirts of, of Tampa, like St. Petersburg, Dunedin, Clearwater. So everything is within like a, I don't know, like 20 to 40 minute, uh, drive. For me. Uh, so that's where all the like cooler stuff is, I guess. Why don't you, uh, so are you in Tampa by choice or that's just kind of where you, where your life began. And so you tend to stick around, like, I'm wondering, uh, yeah. like, for example, Christberg <clears throat> is a, is a friend of mine and he's Jonathan Christberg mm-hmm. and he, is uh he's from miami and he kind of talks about the scene back in the day in miami but i don't really know how it's how it's changed i've never asked yeah. him I actually asked him about that but like i don't know mm-hmm. is there anything going on in miami or like is there anything keeping you in I, tampa well my, my family my my folks are here oh, that makes sense um, yeah. i grew up here um 
Yeah, yeah. Usually it's a pretty yeah. big. Pretty I think big it one. just after Boston, I you know came home and and then um, the whole like gigging thing started to take off here. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I if I move now, um, I don't it might be quite a hassle to get gigs again somewhere else. Yeah, it's a <laughs> reestablish. It's a yeah, it's a lot um, of work. And even if you did, your gigs would probably remain pretty consistent. Like, you know, um, traveling to some place to play with some person who yeah. likes your sound in particular. Like, it doesn't really matter where you are because at the end of the day, you got to yeah. go pick up and move some, you know. Right. Uh, you know, if Intervals asks you to play again, you're going to have to schlep to wherever you need to schlep to. So, um, Yeah, I think that was another reason why it didn't seem important to move, you know. Because if you get yeah. on it, you're gone anyways. What's the point of paying exorbitant rent for a place you're never going to be at? Yeah, and I was talking to... Um, I spoke to Wes, Wes Howe. You know that his band Alluvial? Wes mm -hmm. Howe and Alluvial. I was talking to him a couple <laughs> months ago, and I, I think he's in the Atlanta area. Yeah. And, uh -huh. uh, and uh, I was talking to Emil Wurstler the other day, and he's in the Nashville area. So it kind of seems like yeah. a lot of people like to hang out, hang out around there. I don't think there's very many people doing like um, this kind of, you know, this prog. I don't know. You know, you can't bucket all that stuff into the same thing, but I guess in a way we're all in a similar, we all are, we're all living in a, in a similar world. Um, you know, you, yeah. me, Wes, Amel, um, you know, that, that type of sound, um, at, you know, intervals, mm -hmm. Um, I don't really know anyone that's like in my neck of the woods. Like, well, you know, there's Jersey. There's, you know, thank you, thank you, scientist. That Tom Monda. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Tom's yeah, awesome. I love Tom. Yeah, He's a they're, good dude. They're in Jersey. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's right. I make plans Tom's with Tom. River, right or something. Yeah, yeah, and I make I make plans right. with Tom like once every six months, and for oh, whatever, cool. whatever whatever reason, they're like. <laughs> more often than not canceled <laughs> like uh oh. you know some some, some yeah. stupid reason like my some pipe burst in my house i think last time and it was like dude i gotta yeah. cancel again it's impossible yeah um dang but uh where was i way in the beginning i wanted to ask you about um oh right the uh the instagram thing yeah so yeah i kind of feel like right now i've uh uh I'm trying yeah, I'm trying to find the balance. Like I think I'm probably doing it a little bit too much at the moment and I'm feeling it mentally. Like you know, it's exhausting having to post. Uh, do we lose it? Yeah, it's it's been weird lately just like with all the storms we've had down here. Um yeah, I bet. it just f's everything up like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. These old apartments too, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Sucks. Yeah, long story short, trying to figure out the social thing and you know, I don't think I've found the the recipe yet for what, you know, in my head, there's like a balance. There's like the work, the, the stuff that I want to do. There's the stuff that people want me to do. Mm -hmm. And then there's something in between that uh, is like the balance between happy Nick playing music that he wants to play and you know, not as happy Nick doing things that he has to do mm. to make some money. Sure. Um, you know, and exactly. uh, same boat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And other, other yeah. than, other than, um, you know, wedding gigs and stuff, which at this point in my, in my life, I've kind of pretty much said, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not I'd rather do something else mm -hmm. to make some money than do that. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather just, you know, work a day job and, when it's time to play music, only play the music that I want to play. I kind yeah. of decided, I've kind of decided that already. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, hopefully the, the, the goal, it's hopefully a, a realistic near, near term goal is to find a way to um, fund some of the musical things I want to do with money. That's not from the day gig, like, mm -hmm. you know, generate some cash through a Patreon or some lesson videos or, yeah. Uh, you know, some gigs or something. Yeah. That um, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, so do you, 
do you see yourself eventually being like full time on the road? Like, is that what you want to do or you're kind of up for playing anything? I'm yeah, very undecided, just up for whatever. If something like that comes about again, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go. Nice. Um, <clears throat> but I've just kind of settled on um, doing whatever with a guitar in my hands, just to uh, make some money and keep that as a profession, I guess. Yeah. You went to Berkeley, you said? Yeah, I just went for a year. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Yeah. I went after I graduated down here with um, a BA in like classical studies, I guess is what they called it. Mm. Um, And I had more of like a focus on theory and classical guitar at that time how'd you like um, but class- I was also- how'd, how'd, how'd you like classical i often think of like finding a time in my life where i'm gonna focus on classical for like a year or something mm-hmm. like that i mean even even recently i've been revisiting some bach and bach you know related yeah. theory and stuff and i think it's helped my sure. playing so i'm, I'm yeah. curious how, how same that- i've been i've been you know digging through the sonatas and partitas and doing all the single line stuff um which has been really cool it's definitely changed my playing Mm -hmm. quite a bit but uh it was cool as necessary experience for me because i had just kind of started like a couple years before i got to school um so it helped me out a lot like with discipline and how to teach myself um so at, at that time i didn't feel like the strongest player already um but it, it definitely helped and got me started a lot and i still remember you know some pieces that i spent time on um yeah so it's fun to play some of those again uh it's just like fun fun beautiful music to hear and now it's just trying to figure out how a way to translate that into normal conventional playing yeah i mean the thing with anything is is <clears throat> anything that you practice or f- for me anything that i practice i feel like i need to find a way to mm-hmm. a- a- apply it somehow like the reason i'm not yeah. going out and picking up a classical guitar and um, i do have some of the sonatas and partitas sitting here but the reason that mm-hmm. you know my practice space isn't set up with classical guitar and you know sheet music is mm-hmm. because if i'm going to do that i have to commit like mm-hmm. my framework for the next 6 months needs to be that yeah like it can't it can't just be okay you know what i'm going to do i'm going to pick up the classical today and tinker with sure. that because it's not going to um you know it's like going to the gym and doing biceps once every 4 months like what's the point like you kind of mm-hmm. need to make it your routine or it's like i'm going on a diet mm-hmm. and i'm going to lose 100 pounds and you decide to eat healthy for only a day. It's like <laughs> you kind of you kind of got to make it your routine if you want to. Yeah. If you want to actually, yeah, learn. I can you see like, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like you mm-hmm. know, I know with classical, you know, a big thing is like just is tone. Um, well, of mm-hmm. course, that is. It's the same with electric guitar, but sure. Um, you know, like <clears throat> uh you kind of have to generate the sound yourself on the classical classical mm-hmm. guitar. So, you know, really getting the tone out of a single note is something that you could pra- probably practice for days on end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not what I'm, uh, what I'm working on at the moment, but yeah, um, same here. Like I don't, I used to think like that and I don't, I don't even think I have like a worthy like nylon string to get, the right tone because i just used like the, the, go- the goat and multiac yeah. um or just like a steel string acoustic or just on electric um and i just do everything picking fingers now so i try to do all the like lute suites and all that stuff but just picking picking fingers so it's almost like a <laughs> hybrid exercise and it kind of helps translate a little bit more with conventional playing because it's i don't ever have to do the pick down or the pick in my mouth and yeah and and like shift into classical tom you know it just is like yeah i don't know it 
tends tends to make more sense now. Yeah, you're kind of like you're you're like working on the same <clears throat> recipe. You're like yeah. Yeah, you're not changing yeah, you're not changing recipes all that much. Well, yeah, right. you know what I mean. Yeah. Um yeah, I was doing that recently with um I was I was uh, I just recorded some music a few months ago, and then I did a video for it that I'm, and all this all of the, this I'm trying to put out. And I said, yeah, okay, you know what? I'm going to record a bunch of music, and um, and then I'm going to go into jazz mode. I want to spend like six months to a year just relearning a bunch of standards, mm-hmm. you know, get some get some local jazz gigs, brush brush up on my, you know, on my like true jazz vocabulary, you know, a la, mm-hmm. you know. Keith Jarrett was someone I was transcribing a lot for for the past like two months and um and then uh just the other day I was like wait a minute like this this project of mine isn't complete yet I kind of gotta like I still haven't put on a show I still Mm -hmm. haven't assembled a, a, a band practice to to play my music live you know now is not even now is not quite the time to me to for me to say okay I'm in jazz mode now like I still have other stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's tough. I mean, just context shifting all the time. I've kind of yeah. it's it's. I'm constantly reminding myself that I'm a that. I mean, you you you, I'm, you probably do the same thing. That this is a lifelong. You're a lifelong student. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. You know, with this stuff. So like, I don't. Yeah, I'm not kicking. I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not kicking myself for for having spent the last two months. Um, you know, revisiting that and learning some new vocabulary. Yeah. Um, but I am realizing like that, that uh, I, I do need to kind of switch gears if I do want to play my music live, like just some administrative stuff. I got to send emails and text messages to see when people can get into a room and, mm-hmm. um, you know, I got to write charts and mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's uh it's crazy um yeah i just started recording a couple weeks ago when you know i just have really crappy handwritten um sheets of my stuff that's like constantly changing and that's like i keep saying like oh i gotta you know put this on the computer like yeah, yeah. actual lead format you know I just keep not doing it so it's like i, I feel you yeah, that's stuff yeah. i gotta do too yeah, I find like the, I find the best way to do it is like just do it first thing in the morning. Don't even let yourself touch the guitar. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like make yourself a cup of coffee. Just sit down, start doing it, and um, yeah, just don't even give yourself the opportunity to get distracted because it yeah right, it is, it it is yeah it is often painfully boring to to be like yeah. Like, oh, well, what, you know, I, I should be playing the, uh, I should be, I'm a guitar player. I should be practicing new licks and stuff right now. But it's like, yeah. And you know, we also got a lot of other boring shit to do if you ever want to play, mm-hmm. play some music. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were you, uh, what were you recording? Uh, some original stuff that I, I wrote back in 2018. Um, just finally just putting it down. Um, mm-hmm. Just because we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but um, you've been talking about recording it for so long, and it's it's just like it's finally time to just like do it. You haven't you so you haven't been you don't have like a studio date booked or anything like that yet. Uh, we we started drums a couple weeks ago, so we've uh-huh. we've done a full like eleven hour day already. Um, and we're getting ready to book some more time, uh, probably in coming week or two, just to finish up drums, um, and then figure out what to do from, from there, like how to do guitars. Um, cause I I feel like I want to do that in the studio, but, um, don't want to pay all that, that (laughs) but I'm also not competent enough with like plugins. Oh man, do you yeah, do same. that? And I hate spending that time doing that. Also, when I have like, you know, really nice amps and really nice overdrive pedals and all this stuff, I've sunk money into. You know, I'd rather <laughs> just 
I understand that stuff rather than like going through, yeah. um, you know, plugins and stuff and trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah here you different I feel the... too, you know, like hearing it through your speakers. Like, I don't know. I'm so used to, um, amp tone, like actual amp tone. Yeah. It's I mean, the environment, strange. the environment's not <laughs> right. It usually in the same place that you practice, right? Like, yeah. like, like having to force mm-hmm. yourself to, to now be creative and mm-hmm. love this, sound on your computer when you've yeah. got like i mean i have the, i was i did the exact same thing i um i recorded some music last in 20 in 2021 i put out some music that i did entirely at home and it was honestly a little bit painful to like click through all the different uh plugins and be like all right well i should probably f- right. i should yeah i should probably like settle on one particular rhythm tone and you right. know, clicking through line six and all the different, Mm -hmm. um, what they call them, all the other archetype, uh, thing. Oh yeah. The neural neural DSP stuff. Yeah. yeah, Neural DSP. Yeah. I was was going through some of those and, Mm um, yeah, a couple other things. Meanwhile, my beautiful, like all two Marshall silver Jubilee with the most amazing (laughs) crunchy rhythm, Right. Sound is sitting right. Sit right over there, and right. you know I In I love tone. yeah right. yeah and I and I love stacking yeah. like three overdrives into my clean channel for yeah. this for this one lead Same. tone. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, well, could I stack three overdrives onto this digital thing? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure someone someone can figure yeah. it out, but sure. for me, but but for me, it's so it's it just crushes my like creative my yeah. creative spirit. Mm-hmm. Except, um, yeah, same same year. Like sp- spending that time, you know, yeah. on the computer instead of like you know having your hands on the computer instead of it here. I don't I don't know. I guess maybe it just doesn't translate quick enough. But like through pedals and amps, it's just I guess it's quicker. I think it's less I options. Like, less less options, yeah, right? I like guess, you're kind yeah. of bound bound to like you're, you're bound to what's in front of you like which is probably mm-hmm. 10 10 different variables like your amp mm-hmm. some of the dials on your amp your yeah. your five six seven eight pedals the handful of knobs on there whereas you pull up yeah you know um a, a plug-in in, in logic and it's like okay here's forty thousand amps which one do you want it's like how oh, the fuck right. am i supposed to make that choice yeah. it's too much it's i mean lot. i would i would be down if um if I could sit in a chair over there and like look out the window and someone else was here clicking yeah, the buttons click, click, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they, and, and they were like, how do you like this one? Okay. Well, let's a, B it, you know, here and here, which one do you like better? Did, and if I don't have to see it and I could just kind of play and experience it yeah. down, I'm down with that. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. But so what I did yeah. for this music I recorded this year, I, I booked a studio. I booked the, the, uh, the time in advance. I said, okay, in five months from now, I'm going to be in a studio recording guitars, for some music that doesn't even exist yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just kind of put me in a corner. Like I had to, this music had to exist at this time. So that way I can go and record it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I said we wanted, I want to use real amps and we used, we used real amps, but same deal. I didn't, I didn't really pick the amps. Like, you know, the engineer there was like, how do you like this one? How do you like that one? Mm-hmm. And um, I just kind of got to, play and someone else it, it, it was my first time working in like a real producer slash engineer setting where someone else can kind of drive that bus and i can just be mm. the creative mind guitar player yeah it was really it was really really nice yeah that does sound nice <laughs> yeah this morning i was actually dropping my my son off at daycare uh-huh. uh, oh um and um on the way back I, I brought up reverb and I actually typed in isolation cabinet because I was thinking, um, like, you know, I have my DI here. I could do, there's some great lead tones I have on the, the, the different plugins, but I, it would be nice to, to run my stuff through mm-hmm. an isolation cabinet and have it actually mic'd and. Right. Reamp it. Yeah. Do it. Do yeah. it that way. That would be cool. That would um, be cool. I also, yeah, I also, tough. I also don't, I also don't mind the sound of a, let's see, uh, of like a blasting amp that's like covered in a blanket. 
Mm-hmm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, recording in this studio, we had a two by 12, like absolutely cranked. Yeah. Um, and we were tracking in a different room, but just hearing that amp rumble in the set in the right. other room, it was just, it was just fun. It sounded good. It sounded it, smooth. You remember which amp? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't, I don't remember the cabinet, um, but the amp was a Friedman 50 watt runt, Friedman runt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, two channel Friedman. I think it's like a notch lower than the, the popular BE 100. Okay. Um, but, um, it was awesome. Like, uh, yeah, it, it had such a great, um, it was, it, was, it had everything I wanted because I, mm. you know, like you have like your diesels and stuff that are meant for super, super saturation heavy stuff. Um, yeah. and I think below that you probably have like s- Solanas and Marshalls. And then I, th- I would even say below that is like this Friedman sound where it doesn't even get quite as dirty as a Marshall. Mm. I don't know, but I, but fuck, fuck if I know that's just my <laughs> minimal experience recording with a, a couple different amps when I was there. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I'm going to use, um, like I'm a, I'm, I like the 112 for some reason. Hmm. Um, I've used two twelves before and it was almost like too much. Um, I don't know why I left the 12. Maybe it's more, I don't know. To, to me, it sounds like a more focused sound, but her tone. What, um, what's next to you? What is that? This is a 72 deluxe. Hmm. Um, and what I've been doing lately is the deluxe and a bad cat dub 40. And, you, and that's, so that's the bad been my tone. Is the bad cat for the distortion or you have the same sound running through I just, both? I, yeah, same sound through both. I just run them okay. pair that, that tone together. It's been really, um, that's cool. killer, killer sound. Um, you know, I for had, the original, um, for the original stuff, but yeah. Yeah. So what were you? Well, before I get there, the um, I want to ask you what you were using for the mm. intervals tour, but um, mm. uh, I saw I saw Jonathan. You're familiar with Jonathan Kreisberg, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw him play a couple of weeks ago, and he was um, doing something similar. He was running through a Polytone and uh, a Fender Deluxe, probably the same amp that's next to you right now. Uh, mm-hmm. That is a Fender, you said, right? A Fender mm-hmm. Deluxe. Yeah. 72. And um, yeah, same sound running through both. And it was actually really nice because they had different qualities, but when it all blended together in the audience, it, yeah. it um, had a really fun, cool. had a really fun sound. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of want to do that too. Yeah. Like, I recently got into the, the whole like Fender amp sound a couple years ago. Um, Cause I had mainly been playing with uh, Bad Cat for the longest time, Bad Cat and Quilter. Um and then my my dad always had you know uh, Fender Super Reverbs, Fender Deluxes, Twins, you know, all vintage. And then I got I got really sucked into that that Fender Fender tone, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, I, especially I've still got... with a Strat, you know, mm. killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I've still yeah. I've still not I've still not done the Fender amp thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to. I just don't have the you know, whenever I have the money to, there's always like something, you know, like what do I want? A new guitar, a new, like, am I going to go recording? Like, but I think my next, you know, ex- big expense is going to be either a Fender Princeton or, or probably, probably a deluxe. Yeah, Princeton's nice. Deluxe is great too. Yeah. I, th- it was funny. I, I bought a deluxe and a twin and the twin was like way cheaper than a, the deluxe wonder, like the, the the price of the deluxe has gone crazy lately interesting um, i wonder what, yeah i got I the, the twin for like half the price of the deluxe which was wild interesting well you said yeah. you got the twin twin you got the twin for half the price yeah half the oh. price of a deluxe yeah everyone's after deluxes i feel like um and i've seen them just on like you know, like Facebook marketplaces and reverb marketplaces and stuff like that. The price is just, it's gone up a lot, mm. which is unfortunate, um, you know, for the vintage ones. So I was lucky to get this one when I got it because it, it's not where it is now, but they're great amps. Yeah. 
really reliable. Your dad plays? Is your is your family mm-hmm. like a musical family? Uh, my my dad plays. Um, my brother plays too. Um, so it's mainly just the three of us. How about you? No, um, parent mom has uh, mom pretty much doesn't like anything but like Garth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, um, my dad uh, introduced me to bands like, you know, Rush and Zeppelin and uh, Hendrix and Clapton and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't say we're like a musical family. Like I didn't, I didn't grow up. Like I have friends that grew up like taking piano lessons from the age of five. And mm-hmm. um, but I mean, you know, all things considered, I did, I did get into the guitar relatively early, like 13. Oh yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that would, no one forced me to get into it. I just started playing, Mm -hmm. um, like Metallica and Iron Maiden and stuff like that. And that's, that was sort of the beginning of sort of the beginning of everything. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Same here. I, I got around, I got into it around, 15 or 16 maybe i think i started taking it a little bit more serious around like 17 or 18 uh yeah. which is cool it wasn't like a thing yet I didn't really mess with it like skateboarding was was my big thing through my teenage years oh, yeah. um and then fall of troy I, I discovered fall of troy and then that was <laughs> it was funny it was it was two fall of troy and Eric Johnson. My dad introduced me to Eric Johnson. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to think when I transitioned from like Maiden. Well, I mean, I got into the the, the high school jazz band. Mm-hmm. Um, and then someone introduced me to to Ben Monder. You're, I'm sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with Ben Monder. Uh, ben Monder, you, you're you're familiar with Ben Monder, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at some point, I don't even know oh, who, who told me who told me about him, but um, I, was probably, I probably started listening to Ben Monder when I was 16 or 17. So only a handful oh, wow. of years after I started playing the guitar. Wow. Because I remember because I remember my dad dropping me off at his apartment in Brooklyn when I was still in high school. Um, and then Ben and my dad having a like a very short conversation about colleges and asking like, oh, should he go to Berkeley? And Ben was probably like. I don't fucking care what he does. <laughs> <laughs> like this isn't a this isn't like a college consultation. Like I'm yeah. just a broke a broke guitar player with spaghetti right. in my walls, and uh, like I don't give a shit what your kid does. Um, but I, I went back to him a couple times, like when I was when I started to when I was actually able to drive myself. But yeah, I I, I was taking lessons with Ben Monter before I could even drive. So that's awesome. Which is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's so cool. <laughs> um, and then I was doing like uh, in high school and uh, like my first year of college, I stayed local. Um, I was doing like some theater theater gigs in Long, in Long mm-hmm. Island, um, you know, like Little Shop of Horrors and yeah. High School Musical and that kind of stuff. And um, like I was so conditioned at that point to play like a certain sound like I wasn't playing high school musical for fun. So I would see like an A major chord and I'd play like an A major seven sharp 11. Right. And they would be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. Same. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A minor chord comes like minor 11. (laughs) Right. 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 Like add, add nine, like, dude, you don't, you're not playing the right, the right stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> and uh i mean i got away with it i don't think i ever changed what i was doing so they kind of they kind of yeah. lived with it they, they were probably like look there's like these are just bored parents in the middle of long island coming to see some stupid off off <laughs> off broadway thing we don't give a shit if you play a major yeah, seven uh, yeah. major chord. <laughs> that's so funny man that's that's the same shit i went through like after Cause I, I didn't really start gigging and stuff until I came home after school and I was doing the same exact thing, like on these t- 
top 40 gigs and i'm just like every major chord major seven major seven and then, you know <laughs> the, the whole tension building shit and it's just like i look back at it now i'm like what was i doing it's so, so ridiculous um you know and and like i would approach some of those gigs too as like the jazz mindset like yeah i'm not really gonna learn this song I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, improvise my way through it. And it just like didn't work. I remember I tanked a couple of gigs and then I learned like, I actually got to learn. I got to learn these parts. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is a different, this is a different thing. Yeah. Totally uh, different. Yeah. um, Yeah. But I've also kind of come to terms with that. I don't care to even be good at that anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you want a guy that has like a really gnarly, like fifties Telecaster sound, mm-hmm. um, you know, go find that guy. I don't, I don't really feel like, mm-hmm. you know, doing anything besides what I want to do at this point. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel um, like I'm discovering that again. Um, yeah. Getting all like sucked into like, oh, the gigging world is what it is and kind of losing yourself and with the the money thing um uh, yeah it was interesting like learning a bit from that but now it's like i can, I can kind of see that they're two separate worlds it's like what i want to do doesn't really trans <laughs> all that well into that you know bar gig what do you think um, yeah 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 um yeah, and you might get like uh, if you if this is the life you wanted to leave, you know, you could get a, a job on Broadway for some show that is like you know some kind of fifties or sixties themed show, or you know, like Rent. Rent is mm-hmm. like a, you know like a four piece rock band that's on stage the entire time with the cast, and it's like a, mm-hmm. a rock band, um, or like you know, Don Quixote. I'm, these are shows that I've played. So I know, I know this, Mm -hmm. uh, probably played very poorly, but I played them nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, or like Don Quixote is like the nylon string thing. And you can kind of say, okay, this is the gig I've accepted. And so for the next, however long I'm on this gig, I should probably learn how to do this sound the best that I can. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like, it's not like your context shifting all the time. You know, you kind of, after six months of playing rent, you've probably got that sound down pretty good. Sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still like it. Yeah. I don't do that at all. Yeah. So <laughs> some gigs are fun. Like the, the more there, there is a band that I work with here pretty frequently. That's it's pretty, R&B focused, R&B soul funk. And those are a bit more fun. Um, um, Especially like duo style stuff or trio style stuff like that, where you can like, you know, decide some things as a guitar player. Cause like most of the time you're playing with a keyboard player and you're just single note doing that, the R&B chunking thing, which gets old pretty quick. Uh, but every once in a while you get to do like duo or trio and you can decide the changes <laughs> actually play some harmony which is nice uh yeah but those are probably like the most fun um i've had is is those those types of gigs you all hear that yeah, it, for a brief moment what was it like a leaf leaf blower <laughs> that's a gar- garbage truck yeah ah. these thin walls <laughs> uh yeah i feel like whenever our, omar omar and i are doing one of these things the the landscapers show up and just like <laughs> for some reason they for some reason they're trying to get like one pesky leaf off of yeah. my window just yeah like, yeah <laughs> just stay right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or yeah they're, they're trying to get the leaves out of this room like no you yeah can go away <laughs> oh, you're doing a podcast huh <laughs> hey bud Hey buddy, what are you doing in there? Can my leaf blower join? <laughs> yeah. Um. So who you who's your who's your band down there? Like, so you found guys to play with? I'm I'm all over the place. Like I'm kind of <clears throat> it's const it's there is like 
bands that I work with regularly, but there's like a lot of them. And then there's these events that happen, like local R&B showcase type of things where everything's just pieced together. Um, or like what you said, like the wedding thing, there's this conglomeration of musicians yeah, yeah. that work under the title of one band name and they get spread out all over the, the state. Yeah. I'm familiar um, with how that, all that works. Yeah. Yeah. All that weird stuff. So yeah. it's just stuff like that. There's church too. Um, I'll do like um, worship stuff on like Saturday night and Sunday morning. That could be fun. Um, that could be actually a lot of fun sometimes. Yeah, I need to. I need to. I I have not played in front of people in a very long time. Uh, part of me was just last week thinking, like, well, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's been hard to find people to play with. For, I think I'm very particular about the sound that I want to do live, mm-hmm. um, and so I've written music that I'm really sincere about, but you know, the music that I'm, that I'm writing now and that I want to play is it's like a mashup of styles that just about no one does. Like not only am I trying to play metal with a very, a very distinct kind of metal and Mm -hmm. uh, mix it with a very distinct flavor of jazz. I need you to do both. Um, Mm -hmm. And I need I need you guys to live within a reasonable radius of where I am, um, and we you know we mm-hmm. all need to be available X number of days to rehearse and mm-hmm. play shows, and so it's it's a super super big challenge. And you know mm-hmm. I'm also having this realization probably for the first time that um, you know bands that bands that actually do manage to piece this puzzle together and get off the ground and and moving um, are. Yeah. I mean, luck is luck is probably a part of it, but I think it's, that's also just a handful of people that have decided to persevere through this really, really difficult, Mm -hmm. you know, task of assembling and, and organizing. um, You know, does that, does that make any sense? Just like constantly being like a, just like a cheerleader for something for this thing to, to keep on going. Like the amount of texts you got to send and emails to get people yeah. in a room, not just mm-hmm. once, but like five times. Yeah. And yeah, you know, and then if like, you know, you get a handful of shows, Oh, you know, bassist can do half the drummer can do, can do half. All right. So I need alternates for those guys. Mm-hmm. So then anyway, so I've, I've actually been playing with the idea of just playing some duo sets of this new music and uh, me and a drummer, and then just you know, mm-hmm. backing track, backtracking the um, the bass and some of the keys. There's keyboard solos on this new music, but I think if I were to do duo, I would just I would just chop out the keyboard solo, keep the keep the common okay. chords, and I'll just kind of shred yeah, solo. Yeah, yeah, just do it in front of, and it'll you know I think you know my music is also kind of fun. It's not all like heady. So I think it'll, I yeah. think the fun, the fun factor will still come across if it's duo. Yeah. Um, and then I can continue to solve the problems of filling out the rest mm-hmm. of the band over, over time. Like I don't need to solve all these problems at once. Right. Right. You know, Makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's kind of like what I want to do too, is a little bit more fun stuff instead of being super heady all the time. Like I wanted it to be, I always want everyone that I'm playing with to have fun like playing this stuff and not have it be too like yeah. over the head i guess um well yeah it's funny it's funny we're talking about this well i guess it's not that funny because this is literally what we do every day but um <laughs> 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 uh, the uh I, so i i was thinking about how this <clears throat> kind of relates to being a chef the other day mm-hmm. and uh you know you have like someone that goes to school for cooking and their objective is to make something that's absolutely like delicious in, and then you have like musicians who go to school for music and they're sometimes their objective turns into, I want to make something that's so obscure and impossible to listen to. And it's like, mm-hmm. I wonder why that's that juxtaposition exists. Like, yeah, 
Like, like, why are musicians so hell bent on writing something so complicated that such few amount of people can listen to it and understand it? Yeah, yet you, mm-hmm. you have people going to, to culinary school, and they're like, "I need to make something that's so delicious that everyone is going to uh, fucking everyone, die over right. this thing." Yeah, yeah. And so it had me, yeah. It, yeah, and it had me kind of rethink, like, well, why the hell am I? What kind of? What's you know? What's my mission for this next chunk of music that I'm going to write? Is it Mm-hmm. Um, or it's a, you know it's a spectrum like how what where am I going to sit on the spectrum this time is it like you know um, you know nice. more am I trying to get more listeners or mm. yeah there's there's no answer to there's no answer to this I, I realize but it was just yeah. like a thought I, I thought I had mm-hmm. I think as long as you're happy with what you're doing you're doing the <laughs> stuff you want to do like the other yeah, right. stuff will, will come or not but <laughs> or <I> th- not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I feel like it, as it, long it, as you're just into what you're doing then you know when you do it i think that's the biggest part for me um yeah yeah into what you're doing to, uh, and uh and uh well the other day when i was talking to to amol we were kind of talking about you know guys like Kranz who do things like you know like wayne wayne mm-hmm. Kranz who are you know they might do like a college um clinic and you know charge yeah. a boat, boatload of money to do a college right. clinic and then use that money to fund their passion project of playing with carl Locke and lefave mm-hmm. and um you know, because even in I saw Krantz a couple of months ago in 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 New York, and uh, you know it wasn't sold out. Like in the cost of Carlock and Lafave, it's probably not cheap. And mm-hmm. It only costs like fifteen dollars to get in. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like he he probably enjoys doing those college clinics. I think I I enjoy teaching sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. Especially if it would be in a room full of people that are like really into what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe there's always going to be okay. like this sense of you got a, you got your money thing and then you got your passion project. And like, you know, hopefully you're making mm-hmm. enough cash from your money thing to fund your, to fund your passion project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's tough. Hopefully you can bridge a little bit of a gap with the money thing to make it enjoyable too. That's always a tough thing, tough thing to do. Have you ever wondered why you write the music that you write or play the music that you play or you, Um, or do you not care? I, cause I, I have not really thought about this in the past, but lately I've been wondering like, what is it about this music that, very few people listen to that I enjoy so much. Um, and I've said on this, on this podcast before talking to other people, like it certainly mm-hmm. isn't for the girls. Like there is, there was no yeah, girls that ever, I know. there was no girls that ever forthright shows. Right. Right. Um, there's definitely no girls showing up. Yeah. My wacky, when I was doing wacky avant-garde gig, gig actually yeah. more, more girls were showing up to the wacky avant-garde stuff than they were to the metal shows. So I, you know, I've just been wondering, I, I keep on, writing this kind of music it must be just because i enjoy it um the self-challenge maybe i don't know maybe the maybe the the masochism <laughs> masochism <laughs> yeah there might be an element of masochism there, there. might be yeah uh, um yeah, yeah that's, 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 social media has kind of gamified it a little bit too like how many followers do you have it's like points it's like right, oh shit i'm not I'm not truly a musician until I've got as many points as this guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. That stuff is uh, ridiculous. Yeah. That's a hard one to answer. Um, I'm still, tr- I feel like I'm still trying to find how I write. Cause I, I really haven't been writing. Um, since 2018 or 2019 it kind of just like fell off um and the writing that i'll do will just kind of be like arrangements rearrangements of a pop 
song and turning it into a jazz mm. format or a nerdy harmonization <laughs> of something. That's how it's been lately. Um, yeah. See, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm rediscovering the writing thing currently. Um, and it's been interesting too, like going back and re- starting the process of recording that old stuff. Um, just cause I'm so different. Like does you like I'm four years older and how I play now as opposed to how I was then. And it's been interesting. Um, oh, so you're, you mean you're recording stuff that you wrote four years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, I, it's I, been I, interesting going back and playing that stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of a bridge that Everforth rate is, is crossing. I don't know if you know anything about Everforth rate. It's been a yeah. very long time. You do? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I listen to you guys. Oh, sweet. Like big time. It was you, <laughs> you guys in, uh, in, uh, AAL. Back oh. then. Like I remember seeing those videos of you guys on tour together and yeah, that's funny. geeking out about the, uh, what was it? Which guitar? Is it the nine string? Oh, uh, I think I think it was his. Oh no, it wasn't a nine string. It was the. Uh, is this the, the one where I was wearing a gray? Right? I was wearing a gray vest. Yeah, it was a Strandberg. I was with the Strandberg. extra the extra frets right at the bottom. That's not a nine yeah. string. I didn't think it was a nine string. Oh. Is this the one where I was wearing like a gray vest or something like in the in like a back out in like a yeah uh, it doesn't yeah I remember yeah. that yeah um, I think Omar you shot that video um, yeah the guitar sure. that's like it almost. It's all ancient, relicy looking, almost like reminds me like a table, almost. Yeah, yeah, like a like a <laughs> the artsy a table, really, a really expensive artsy table that like yeah. only someone in like Tribeca, New York City, right. Tribeca or something would have. And someone was um, like, "Let's put strings on it." Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't. Black I wanna, there's probably like six people with one of those guitars, and he's like, "Yeah," charges a hundred grand for each one. He's like, "I I work all year on this." <laughs> who who made that guitar? <laughs> I f- totally forgot. Tune guitar. Oh, that was Rick Tune. Rick that Tune. was the one. Oh, yeah. the it. Okay, right. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Can you imagine if I dropped that guitar in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> we'd do that. <laughs> Just threw it over my shoulder. Yeah. The Ingve uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. One catch. <laughs> Where's my guitar? <laughs> yeah. God, what was that show? Was it? I think it was Generation X. X or Axe oh. and to- Tosin was on it. Um, and it was like Ingve, Nuno, yeah, Satriani, yeah, and Ingve. That, that was hilarious. Throwing, wonder, the, throwing the guitar and ripping the strings out too. Like he did, he did one section where everything, like everything's on just wide open gain, and he's just. Gah, gah. God, ripping all the strings out. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I wonder what I would do if I got a phone call. Like, hey, Nick, do you want to go do the G3 tour with yeah, Satriani, Ingve? Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I don't know. I'd be like, why? Do you have the do you have do you have the right number? <laughs> Nick Lorandi, right? Not like a different Nick? I mean, I would be hard pressed not to say yes, but I would be a little bit like, why? You realize I'm not going to rip the guitar sh- the strings off of my guitar. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty mild mannered. It's going to be pretty boring, but all right. You asked for it. Yeah. What if it had to be the, uh, um, in the rhythm section and learn all that too. Oh shit! Kill me. I mean, yeah, I was watching. I was watching them a lot too. I was like, damn. Um, I, I would rather be in the rhythm section. But, yeah, probably. But I'd also, I'd also rather not be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I've never gotten that phone call, so I don't know what I'd actually say. It's like when someone asks you, like, all right, what would you do if you were being robbed? And, like, someone had, it's like, I don't fucking know what I would do. <laughs> right. It's not currently um, happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, so anyway, my, my, my 
I veered off from uh yeah so ever forth it's going is having or yeah it's, it's still having this challenge of like we're we're mixing songs now that are you know they, they're arranged they're arranged from like two years to 10 years old and you know we've re, we've we recorded them of course but the content right. is different so like i get a mix and i of a song that's right nine ten years old and i'm like mm -hmm. or i have to retrack a, a song that's nine ten years old mm -hmm. and we've heard it so many times that there's no way to change it like this song yeah. is the way the song is you like we're not changing this song but mm -hmm. i'm uh, but i'm like i would never write this now I mean, it sounds good right but it's yeah. weird to put out I, music that is not a representation of what of, i'm doing right now. yeah uh, it's it's strange. it's tricky it's weird a weird feeling yeah i almost feel like a liar you know yeah uh, yeah i know <laughs> yeah so this music is going to come out and i'm going to be like here it is like brand new ever fourth rate except i wrote most of this a long ass time ago yeah uh -huh. um it sounds good nonetheless i hope you like it but mm. yeah same thoughts man same thing yeah. same that i've been going through yeah at a certain point though you just got to drop it just like it's the same it's the same yeah you, exactly <clears throat> it's the same it's the same when you get like a new mix or something and you're just like oh i like this about it i get like i like that about it can you you know, you get like three mix revisions or three or four mix revisions. Can you lower the bass? Can you raise the keys there? Can you do that, this, and the other thing? And after a certain point, it's like you show your friends and their, you know, their response is, dude, this sounds amazing. It sounds so good. And you're like mm -hmm. so in it at that point that you almost hate it at this point. Like I've listened to mm -hmm. this 8,000 times. I've picked it apart. Like, you know, you know, objectively in your heart, it's got to sound good, but you've kind yeah. of torn it to pieces that you're yeah. now your own worst critic. Right. Yeah, do, doing a bit of that too. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Anyway, dude, I have I like I have like songs that are similar too. Like I oh. got into this writing way, and they all they're they said they're different songs, but they have the same like format and structure. And I'm just rec I'm recording it all, but I'm like, oh man, I know this is not gonna be, you know put on one cohesive thing um i struggle i struggle with that a lot yeah but also you got, like i also had this i also think like um it's sometimes it's best just to like just go with your gut like turn your brain off a little bit mm -hmm. you know no one's gonna pick like i put so much time and effort and a good chunk of money into this new music and then the music video and i was on my way over and i were driving on our way back from canada because that's where we shot the shot the video and i was like oh, okay. dude this was this was a lot of fun i put a lot of heart and soul and and work into this but my the my biggest fan the person that's following and holding on to every single post that i make is probably going to listen to it four times and then never touch it again mm. <laughs> it's like, you know, like there's, there's music out there from artists that I like that I still haven't heard yet. There's, mm -hmm. um, you know, so whereas I've, uh, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how true that is, but I, but, uh, you know, you're, I think even your biggest fan isn't going to listen to something half as much as you've, you know, you've listened to it, you know, going right. back on the mixes and picking absolutely everything apart. And like, you know, where like a snare drum is like, could have not been nudged to like a micro shit second, like before or mm -hmm. after. And that part comes in the yeah. song and you're like, Oh, why can't, why can't right. they nudge that? Yeah. But you know, people listen to that stuff and it just, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it goes right by them. Yep. Yeah. But we should do this again though. I was thinking that we would, yeah, I'd love to, I, I was, uh, I was thinking before we got on, like, I, I kind of want to just like pick up the guitar and talk to Thomas about like what he's practicing and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't get, get to that, but we could totally mm -hmm. hang yeah. again sometime. Yeah. Um, I love to. It's, it's fun. It's more like conversational than the other ones I've done before. I like that. It's cool. Cool. Hey Thomas, it was awesome chatting with you for the for the first time. I think it was been too long, but I hope you and I kind of stay in touch. Yeah, definitely. All right, brother, I'll catch you definitely. later. All right, see you, man. Have a good day.